So with assembly language, functions um, are, are not directly implemented. So let's talk here about how we might implement functions. So at this point in the class, we've been exposed to actually being able to jump to a line of code by using the jump instruction. Um, but I want to look at some of the additional tools that allow us to organize our code. So not only do we jump to a function, we can return. How are we getting the values that are being passed in? What parameters are being passed in? Um, how do we send information back? Um, and then how do we, if we're inside of a function, how do we not destroy the register contents um, for the calling function? For then a function that called us, how do we not destroy the values that he might be using? Because we only have a small number of registers that we can work with. So we may have to protect those registers. So imagine that we have a, a main, a C, a bit of C code, and there's a printf, um, and then we inc we decrement the value, and then there is um, another result that's generated here, and then another printf. So if we were to implement this in MIPS, main would be the label of the beginning of that function. And then ignoring um, a couple of things here where we just simply want to, you know, after we do the, you know, we want to print, actually. That's what we're searching to do. How do we get to this other function called printf? Because this is um, the function that we wish to call and, and talk about here. So if we jump to that printf, we go ahead and get to that label called printf. And after we're done doing whatever we're going to do, we're going to have to return. And where we return is not to this line. We actually want to return to the line after printf. And so that line after printf is where Right, that's where we do our decrement. That line after our printf, there's an n minus minus. So that's where we want to return to. So in MIPS, if I'm going to jump off to printf, I know I need to go to a particular spot. And that spot here is indicated by this label called after one. All right? So that makes sense. We need to return to the line after this function call was called. Now, if we go to the next line where we actually go ahead and there's another um, factorial um, function that's called, but more importantly, when I do another jump to printf, we go here, he still wants to go to the same place. So this function, printf, that we're looking at here, doesn't have high utility because it's always returning to this particular spot. So we need to find a way so that when we do our jump to a particular location, we automatically go to the next line subsequent to the function call. And so what's going to help us get there is something called jump and link, because jumping alone isn't sufficient. We need to um, save and, re and, and um, record the information that will help us return to the next line of code. So if I'm, if I have a, a, a function call to something called sum, then if I want to add four and three together and then jump and link to something called sum, I jump over here I do the addition, or I take a 0, which was my 4, and I take a 1, which is my 3. I sum them up together, and I get the value stored inside of v0, the result, and then I return. So by convention, 
arguments that are being passed in are stored inside of the A registers. And if I'm returning a value, and I'm not using the stack, this assumes we just are trying to be um, take a different approach where we're not thinking about the cost of using a stack. Then I'm going to return this value in V0 and then just head on back out. So these two things are new. This one is the jump and link, and then this one is the jump and return. So when you call the jump and link, it will take this register and, re and place into it the address of the next instruction. So RA now contains the address of the next instruction. So when I say um, a jump to the value in the register, it's going to jump to the value that is inside of register RA, which was populated with the address of, um, in here it looks like it's number four. So it'll just jump to this, in this case it's a NOP, a no op instruction. But that's how jump and link works. Um, those two will go hand in hand. You jump and link, and it takes you to some place um, based on the, the, the label. Not only does it jump there, but it also populates the, um, the register value um, that, that populates RA with the address to which you wish to return. And then as this continues, um, this code continues on downward and it's, it will, if we are finished at some point, we're going to exit. And so this exit may be somewhere way down at the bottom of your code. And in fact, you could have lots of code here and this may be too far of a jump. So instead of jumping to the exit, ideally we do some type of system call that would break the code and stop. So um, ideally we could exit and set up an exit like this where we load 10 into v0, we do a system call and we break out of that function right there. So that is one of the simpler mechanisms for implementing um, methods, functions, depending on which language and which, which era you're looking at. Methods, functions, routines um, are often, and have, well, they've been used interchangeably. So this, the entirety of this function or method is implemented in these lines of code here. So that's jump and link. It's a two-part operation. Link loads the RA register, well, not with the program counter value, but the program counter plus four, like the subsequent four bytes where that called function must return. And then it not only does it link, it also jumps to the indicated label. Sometimes I've heard it suggested that it could have been called link and jump because that's what happens first. It links and then it jumps. And then when you're ready to return, you just simply use a JR jump to the value in a register and that returns a quote unquote function back to the caller. So to tidy up, our code, it would look something like this, where now instead of a jump to printf, it's a jump and link to printf. Um, and that way, when we do jump over to printf, RA will contain, initially it'll contain the address of that instruction, and then, right, and then when we call um, jump and link to printf again, it will contain the address of the next instruction. RA will contain the correct address. The address following the instruction where the jump and link occurred. Hence program counter plus four.
So if you want to see what that looks like, here it is. You do an add immediate, another add immediate, jump and link to sum, and then um, and then we can run this. Let's go ahead and step through this. Let's make sure we can see our register values. So let's go ahead and put a three and a four into our two registers. So we should see that A0 and A1 both are loaded with values. So there's the four and there's the three. Let's step through. And at this point, we've done our jump. And now you see that the label here, is, this is where we are. Um, and it's going to do things a little bit more complicated than what we want. Let's see, jump and link to sum. And then let's see, there's our sum, changes the stack pointer. So let's hold off on that. Okay, let's try this again. And we're gonna hold off on addressing stack pointer concerns. So let's step through. Now the jump and link to sum, notice that the program counter shows that we're at um, 400008. Zero, 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 and of course, that's where we are. You can see that here. 400008. Zero, 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 now, when I do this one single step, the jump and link should take the return address and populate it. But it shouldn't populate it with where we are. It should populate it with um, the subsequent instruction, which is at C. So if I do one step, Notice that the return address register, RA, has been populated with the subsequent instruction. That way, when I go ahead and proceed into my sum, which does the addition, so let's step, and it does the addition of A0 and A1, puts the result, 4 plus 3 gets stored into V0. All right, so we have our sum stored there, and then there's a JRRA, so it's going to return to the address, this, the instruction that is just after my jump and link. So it took the program counter value um, that was stored, right? It took the program counter value um, where the leap off point was, added four to it so that it, we would know where to return.